Hello everyone, welcome to the Madhouse. Um, I thought I'd give you guys an update on the quarantine and the fish tank. It's been a week full of fish drama. Um, everything always goes great until I decide to get new fish, I swear, and then everything breaks down. So quarantine, we've had several losses. You can see um, this, I'm super unhappy about this, the, um, the rose line sharks. There's a bunch of them that are nose down. In fact, almost all of them, this guy's almost vertical. So I was a little worried about this when I put them in here because the tank hadn't had a very high bio load and it did start going through a cycle. And then I was dosing medicine, which can be really hard on a cycle. I put this big sponge in because it was from the big tank and it is cycled. Um, so this tank currently doesn't have any ammonia nitrites in it. Um, it does have trace nitrates, which is fine. That's not going to hurt them. So it cycled really quick, even with the um, stress of medication. So at this point, I don't know if it was the cycling that only took a couple days or just that they're new fish and they come in sick or the stress of the medication that is causing all these very unhappy fish. I'm really bummed because I really want those rose line sharks. They were like a main main um, addition and they're very expensive for a fish. Now the rainbows all seem to be doing fine which is awesome. But <laughs> because I don't want them to start showing symptoms. And this is one of the reasons it would have been more ideal to have quarantine for each fish separately because the species, the rainbows, they're doing great. They could probably go into a main display at this point if my main display wasn't being wonky. So more on that later. Um, coolie loaches. We've had heavy casualties, at least one a day. I lost four yesterday. I'm going to lose this one later today. I can already tell he's just getting pale and he's breathing heavy. So that's a real bummer. Again, I don't know exactly what's causing them to be stressed out. They've been dewormed. Everyone's had a course of antibiotics because of the dewormer, after the dewormer, and they've had daily water changes. So I did a huge water change yesterday and I put the, um, the leaf in there because that tannin, those leaves exert a natural antibiotic, antiviral, or viral booster, or whatever. So I'm hoping that'll help. Um, last night there were two of the rose lines that were swimming mostly nose down, and now they're almost all doing it, which really, really makes me sad. And like I said, so I've been doing daily water changes and trying to give, keep them as comfortable as possible. And I mean, it's weird too because they're eating, but other than this weird swimming behavior, I don't know what else to do for them. And while I was stressing about these guys and my injured placosmus, everything else went bonkers too. So I'll get back to the cosmos in a minute. Meanwhile, in Shelly land, I was telling to a friend of mine, well, at least my shell dwellers are doing great. There's nothing wrong with them. Well, we came in to look at them and there's one with a dropsy, the guy that used to live right here. And there was a dead one over here. So I checked all the water parameters. All the water parameters look spot on, exactly like what my tap looks like, exactly what they're used to. Plants are growing fine. I don't see any other critters in the tank that look stressed out. So I gave them a course of antibiotics, although I don't really think the rest of the tank needed it. And I've just been keeping an eye on them. And then I also put in the leaves in this tank and I put one per 
gallon or one per ten gallons um, and they're floating up there that's one reason it's so dark and so this is really teen tea stained you can see and it's really dark Let's see if we can... my fingers are still covered in in super glue so I uh, have a hard time operating a little exposure thing but anyway it's um Seems to be doing okay. I mean, everyone else is acting fine. Digging, excavating. Generally acting normal, so I just don't know what happened with the one. You know, I've had them for a year. They take up about a year before they're ready. They were, you know, this is about a year old. That's about two years old. I would think they have at least a three or four year lifespan, but you never know. Someone could have had something else. So, um, I'm keeping an eye on this guy, this tank too. So on a plus note, you saw that I trimmed these last week and you can see that the head of the plant where I trimmed it is already splitting to new leaves and they're do all doing that. So, you know, the plants are happy. The tank parameters are spot on. If anything, um, I could let my nitrates get a little higher so that the plants will grow a little better. But I'm just keeping an eye. It's just weird that two fish would, one would be dead and one would be, got yeah, severely dropsy, you know, just a little pine cone body. And, and I mean, I don't, that one didn't make it. So, um, yep, just keep an eye on the colony, but everyone else seems happy. And, I I worry about just randomly treating with anything else because, you know, they're not showing any signs of parasite. They're not showing any signs of worms or internal issues. Everyone else looks healthy and happy. And... Dropsies, at least to my knowledge, a bacterial thing. Sorry, my finger is in front of the camera. It's a bacterial thing, so I mean, the antibiotic should help anyone else that might have been having an issue with it. But anyway, I'll um, we'll go to the next step. So the 75 has been being treated for meds. Um, just some really random stuff, and I've, I've talked about this in past videos, but, you know, some just random deaths, and, um, then, and I was just getting them, you know, making sure they didn't have any internal issues, and I was getting them all ready for all the new additions, which should have been being added today if nothing had been wrong. And somehow, we lost our cycle. So the tank is currently recycling, which is driving me absolutely bonkers. That's why it's really cloudy today. Um, it's having a bacteria bloom. The ammonia and the nitrite are just trace. They're not even 0.25, but I can, you know, it's just enough to be like driving me crazy. And I want to blame it on the medicine. I think the combo is too much for the bacteria, um, biological filter. And, but people I'm sure will argue with me. Um, but this tank's been running for several years. So the other thing that I noticed with the medicine is I have the oddest acting Corys ever. And they weren't like this before I started medicating. So look, he's got clamped fins. He's out in the front, barely moving. I mean, this Cory is a super shy one. Normally, if I'd gotten like this, I would just walked in the room, he would have scurried away. Um, so I have really sedentary Cory fish. I've got fin, fins that were being eaten away and they're starting to grow back now. So they're doing a little bit better since I quit the medication. So once the first cor full course of antibiotics was over, after my placosmus got injured. He's back there. 
So I can kind of keep an eye on him. His fins are red and sore looking as heck. Um, but I can't see any necessarily like um, fin rot or anything going on. So the cycle's stressing me out because he is in a really compromised position. And if the tank was nice and cycled and healthy and balanced, he should just be growing fins back. Um, so I stopped the antibiotics and, well, I finished the course of antibiotics, did a huge water change and am just doing a water change every day, trying to keep everyone healthy. I put in almond leaves and this one as well. They're not almond leaves, but they're uh, these things. Katapa, katapa leaves. I just always think of them as like almond leaves. But um, the katapa leaves, so again, I put in, I actually put in 10 in this tank, um, even though it's only 75 plus some, but I said, you can't really overdose leaf litter. <laughs> and after that initial water change and those leaves added, noticeably happier activity from all the fish. Um, Corys are coming out and eating a little because like literally they weren't eating at all. So that was really also stressing me out because the quarries are never leave food left over. Um, I haven't seen any other casualties in the big fish or the mid swimmers. So that's good. And you can see there's that rest of that Bucephalandra that I got. And that's a black variety, I believe. And I just have them in there for now. And I, you've noticed that all of those pieces of driftwood are now broken, so no Cori or Pleco or any critter can get stuck in them. I'm not super thrilled with having them in this tank because if the plecos did start acting normal and chomping on things, they could really easily pull them off with the super glue because they've done that with that plant back there. So I do want to get those somewhere else eventually. But for now, that's the update. So he's still alive and kicking back there. I'm keeping an eye on him. Try not to bug him too much. I'm trying to keep an eye on his tail. He might, it's really hard to tell, but I might have to do a surgery procedure on him and trim those rays that are just eaten away. Um, or that might happen naturally. But I'm keeping a good eye on him and I'm trying to keep the water parameters as good as possible and of course detoxifying with extra prime when um, after water changes so that even if there's trace cycling going on it's not injuring the fish too much you know it's really funny because with the plant load in this tank I would think the plants would pick up the ammonia nitrate before it could even get to the cycle point but um, you know and I didn't do anything different on the last water change or anything except the meds in this tank. So that's why I really think it's the, the med combo it was just too harsh on the on the filter. I mean, obviously it didn't break the cycle all the way. I'm not getting huge spikes. I'm getting like 0.25 spikes. So it's just a small compromise in the filter. Um, other than that, that's the update for this week. Um, so my fish are just driving me crazy in the tanks. And chemistry is stressing me out, but that's the day in the life of a madhouse of fish keeping. Um, overall, everything's been okay. I just hope my quarantine fish stop dying on me because I really want to add them to this tank once it stabilizes again. And don't want to have lost all that investment in the fish themselves. So for now, the Shelly's are being watched. The quarantine's getting daily water changes. This tank's getting daily water changes and close observation. And 
This tank got a revamp and we're just waiting for the Nia, or not Nia, the Cardinal Tetras to resettle back in. Um, hope they start schooling out in the middle and not decide to become residents of the back corner. <laughs> but I think everyone will be really happy once they get used to it. I think it looks awesome. Beta is spending all day now exploring. He's back there in the corner. So we'll check back in on that one once they have a couple days to settle in. Hope you guys have a great weekend and happy fish keeping. All you've got to do is feed them to get them out. When I was sucking out the water to start this project this morning, they were all just attacking the hose thinking that there was food in it. Don't they look awesome? And just so everyone knows, I'm keeping close eye on parameters in this tank and it's completely fine with the bio load. And these guys are doing great and they look super healthy. And hopefully they settle in nice. Dad, I'll see them every day when I feed them.